Why is Ayatul Kursi so important? What is so blessed about Ayatul Kursi? There are so many hadith that tell us the blessings of Ayatul Kursi. Of them is the hadith of Ubayy ibn Ka'b uh, in Sahih Bukhari that once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to him and Ubay was, as we already mentioned yesterday, uh, one of the most knowledgeable companions about the Quran. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Ubay, O oh Ubay, which ayah in the Quran is the most blessed ayah? It is the greatest ayah. A'zamu ayah fi kitabillah. So Ubay did not want to respond out of modesty. So he said, Allah and His Messenger know best. So the Prophet ﷺ insisted, O oh, Ubay, what is the greatest ayah in the Quran? So when Ubay realized the Prophet ﷺ wants a response, so he said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, la ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm, lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard, man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu la bi-idhnih, li'alamu ma bayna idihim wa ma khalfahum, wa la yuhituna bi shayim al-ilm illa bima sha'a, wasi'a kursiyuhu al-samawati wal-ard, wa la ya'udu hifduhuma, wa huwa al-aliyu al-azim. When Ubay said this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he like we pushed him gently, yani as a manly a sign of manliness, like it's what we would do to another man, just push him out of pride, out of happiness. And he said, knowledge will always be happy around you. So this shows us that the Prophet ﷺ agreed with Ubay ibn Ka'b that indeed the greatest ayah in the entire Quran is Ayatul Kursi. In another hadith, uh, the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Huraira that uh, he had gotten a lot of charity. This hadith happened in Ramadan as well. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ accepted a lot of sadaqah. So he said to Ubay, O oh, Ubay, go guard the sadaqah in case somebody steals it. Abu Huraira, excuse me. So Abu Huraira went and he guarded the sadaqah. And he fell asleep. When he woke up, uh, he saw somebody stealing some food, something. So he caught him. And the man began to cry, I'm hungry, I'm starved, just forgive me once, I'll never come back again. So Abu Huraira had pity on him. He was very wily, sneaky, crafty. Abu Huraira felt pity, he let him go. So the next morning, the Prophet ﷺ asked him, what happened with your visitor? He already knew. So Abu Huraira said, O Messenger of Allah, he was a poor man, he's, 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 he, he begged, he pleaded, I let him go. The Prophet ﷺ said, he's going to come back again. So Abu Huraira felt, how did the Prophet know? I have to make sure that this time I catch him and I bring him to the Prophet So this time he was on his guard. Lo and behold, he fell asleep, woke up, the man was right in the middle, getting what he could, grabbing what he could. This time Abu Huraira jumped on him. He goes, Wallahi, I'm going to take you to the Prophet And the man began to beg and plead and cry and that Abu Huraira once again felt sympathy for him. And he once again let him go. In the next morning, the Prophet again said, how was your visitor of last night, O Abu Huraira? So this time Abu Huraira said, Khalas, that's it. Three strikes and you're out, right? So on the third night, he stood up and he didn't fall asleep. He managed to catch him. Now, after begging and pleading did not work, the visitor said, okay, will you let me go if I tell you something that will benefit you for the rest of your life? He said, what is it? Well, let me hear what this is. So he said, when you go to sleep, recite Ayatul Kursi. As long as you recite Ayatul Kursi at night, Allah Azza wa Jal will send a hafiz, a protector, to guard over you for the whole night. Nothing can harm you. So when Abu Huraira heard this, he felt this is a big prize, a big treasure. So he let him go. The next morning, the Prophet said, what happened with your visitor, Abu Huraira? And Abu Huraira told him the whole story. And the Prophet said, oh Abu Huraira, he told you a truth now. But he is a habitual liar. Do you know who your visitor was? Abu Huraira said, no. He said, that was shaitan. What was the truth? If you recite Ayatul Kursi, then nothing will harm you. No jinn, no waswas, no evil, nothing will harm you. For the entire night, Allah will send an angel down to protect you. So we learn from this hadith that before we go to sleep, we need to recite Ayatul Kursi every single night. Our Prophet ﷺ, before going to bed, he would recite Ayatul Kursi on himself. In one hadith, we learn also the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, Ayatul Kursi should be recited in the morning and the evening. And in one other hadith reported in Muslim Imam Ahmad that it is also authentic, our Prophet ﷺ said that whoever recited Ayatul Kursi after every single salah, the only thing preventing him from entering Jannah is his own death. This is one of the most beautiful hadith that I want you all to memorize 
and then act upon, beginning from today. Now, why? What is so special about this Ayatul Kursi? It is but one ayah, it is one third of a page. The response is very simple. It is because the verse deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes. Allah says, Allah la ilaha illahu al hayyu al qayyum. Allah, and this is as we know, the primary name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has many names, infinite number of names. And of these are 99 that are extra special and holy. And of these 99, the most common of Allah's names is the name Allah. This is the meaning. The one who is worthy of being venerated and worshipped, this is what Allah means. And la ilaha illahu, the proper translation of the kalima is, there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. Worship is veneration. Worship is submitting yourself to. And if you look around you, mankind always submits. They submit to money. Whatever will get me money, I will do it. This is submission. This is worship, right? He is Al-Hay Al-Qayyum. Al-Hay, the one who has perfect hayat, life. So Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Hay because not only does He have life, He has perfect life and He gives life. Al-Hay does not need anything. So the perfection of Allah's hayat is that He doesn't even get tired. He doesn't need to eat and drink. Al-Qayyum means the one who gives others all that they need. So Al-Hay goes back to Allah. Al-Qayyum goes back to the creation. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم We explained this is the perfection. If Allah Azza wa Jal does not even get tired, He does not even get sleepy, then He doesn't need food. He doesn't need anything. Allah is Al-Ghani. He is free of any needs. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض Every other being besides Him belongs to Him. Nothing happens in this world except that Allah has willed it, except that Allah knows about it, except that Allah has created it. It's a rhetorical question that is meant to indicate His ultimate power. Who can possibly even intercede? Allah is saying you cannot even Ask shafa'a from him unless he allows you to do so. Allah knows what is in front of them, meaning what will happen to them in the future, meaning the akhirah. And what is behind them, meaning what they have done that everybody else thinks is hidden. Allah knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Allah knows what's going to happen in the next life. Allah knows what you did in hidden and secret. Allah knows when nobody was looking, when everybody thought that you're all alone. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ So Allah knows everything about you. As for you and as for the creation, they know nothing. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ Basically it means, this is a complete, uh, if you like, uh, absence of knowledge. They have nothing of Allah's knowledge. The rest of the creation do not share Allah's knowledge, except if Allah tells them. إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ His kursi, the kursi is one of the largest and the most magnificent creations of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah says, His kursi encompasses all of this that you know around you. وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا That He never becomes tired of taking care of the entire creation. Every single being is taken care of. The air that you breathe, the water that I drink, Allah has destined it for you. Allah knows it. وَلَا يَؤُودُ حِفْظُهُمَا All of these billions of beasts and creatures, Allah says, even that which crawls in the land, that which swims in the ocean, there is nothing except that Allah is giving its sustenance to it. Allah has everything in it. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ And these are two of the majestic names of Allah, the comprehensive names of Allah. Al-Ali means the exalted. So Allah Azza wa Jal is exalted in His essence. He is above us. He is exalted in His might. He is exalted in His knowledge. Al-Ali, there is nothing greater than Allah. Al-Azim again means the majestic and the great. Al-Azim, there is nothing that is greater than Allah Azza wa Jal. This one verse has more than 20 of Allah's names and attributes and in fact the whole verse from beginning to end is nothing other than the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is because of this that this verse is the greatest verse in the Quran